Hey, uh, I hadn't made a video in a while, but I figured I'd make a beginner video to show how to, you know, fingerprint a little network here. I'm going to download a tool called AMAP, uh, just for fun. Let's see here. Here we go. Now, the main tool I'm going to be using is uh, Nmap with Telnet, just for basic crap. Um, now, when you download Nmap, you go to nmap.org, you go to the download section, and you select your release. You can either download a Windows binary, which is the EXE, Linux binaries, Mac binaries, and even source code you can compile yourself for Linux or Solaris, whatever you need to. I mean, it's got a tons of different distributions you can use. Now, this is pretty much the de facto standard in port scanners. When you install it, it comes with two parts, the ZenMap GUI and the command line interface. I always use command line, but I'm going to show you the GUI. Now, the IP address of my router is 192.168.1.1, which is the default gateway for my Soho network. I'm just going to do a default scan. It's uh, called the intent scan. And right here it shows the command. If you change this, it changes these parameters. And these parameters right here are the same ones you would use if you were opening up command prompt and typing in nmap and then doing your you know, commands right here. But for now, let's just hit scan. So it's going to scan this IP address under T4. This section here means the timing is set to the level 4, which is level 5 is the fastest it can possibly scan. And you might think, why would I want to scan slower than possible? Well, if you're scanning a network that has an intrusion detection system or an advanced firewall, it may detect a port scan since it's lighting up all these ports at one time. And it may say, hey, I don't want this asshole knowing what ports I've got open. And then boom, it shuts you down and you don't get any information back. So if you do a slower scan, a lot of times you'll find out more information if there are countermeasures in place. Now the scan's finished and we have three open ports. On a Lynx router, this is typical. You have a DNS TCP port open, a web server port 80 open, and a Telnet port 23 TCP open. We can test all three of these right now. Test the HTTP port 192.168 Point one, point one. You can just type the IP address in the URL bar. Then put a colon and type the port number. Port 80 is the web server port. Boom. Now we see that our HTTP port is open right now. Okay. Now we are going to test the DNS port. Let's open up Telnet. Now you can either uh, go to on Vista. It's usually not by default. You have to go to Control Panel, Programs and Features, Turn Windows Features On or Off, and then enable the Telnet client. And then once you have that, you can just type in Telnet at the prompt. Okay, and then you get the Telnet prompt. And I'm going to type in Open 192.168.1.1 with a 23 afterwards, which is the port number. I'll do that one more time. Open 192.168.1.1 space 23, which is the port number. Now we're open, and see we're at the Telnet interface for the router. And I can log in with the router credentials. Let me try this again. There we go. Now we are actually in the router's operating system connected through port 23. Okay, now the DNS port to test if it's open, we can try and tell that to port 20, uh, 53. Now we're not going to find anything because it's not really compatible with the Telnet protocol, but you can definitely tell that it's open because we've got a cursor and a blank screen. If it had not been open, here's what happens when you Telnet to a port that's not open. Telnet 192.168.1.1. Let's do 2380. See, it says could not open a connection on port 2380. Connection failed. Now, to use the command line interface, you just open up command prompt. Oh, wait. 
before I get there, let me show you this under the Zen Map GUI. Your first screen is the output. It tells you the port that's open, the service, and even the version that it detects. It uses pattern matching and heuristics to try and determine exactly what version of the service is running. Here it's DDVRT Service Pack 2. On the domain, it tells you the DNS version. It tells you the HTTP version on the web port that's open. Okay? It tells you the operating system details, how long it's been up, the distance, how many hops, a hop count between your system and that system, uh, the T -T TCP sequence numbers, uh, you know, the routing information. Under ports and host, you get a little colorful, pretty display of the ports that are open. You can sort them by protocol, by state, by service. Under topology, you actually get a map laid out of your system and the system you're scanning and how far apart they are. It's just a good graphic overview showing you what all uh, routes your packets are going through. Host details are just a summary about the host you scanned and then this is the scan itself. Now the command interface is about the sa same principle but a little different to get used to. You type in nmap by itself and you get the help screen. Okay, here's firewall, IDS, evasion, and spoofing. You can try and foil the attempts to block your scan. Uh, you can even do scripts. I haven't gotten that far with nmap yet, but you can write your own scan scripts. Uh, it's pretty badass. You can do version detection, uh, port specification, but scan techniques is the main part. I'm going to open up a separate command window just so I can keep the help screen up. nmap 192.168.1.1. There's your IP address that you scan. Now yours will be different, of course, for whatever you're scanning. I'm going to put T5, which tells it to scan as fast as possible. But like I said, it might not always be necessary. And then under the scan type, I'm going to do S, uh, lowercase s, then an uppercase s, which is a TCP connect scan. It just tries to open a TCP IP connection to each port. Now here's the same results we had earlier. T uh, 23 is open. That means it's open to Telnet. DNS is open and web servers open. Now I'm going to do this time instead of SS I'm going to do S with a capital X which is a XMA scan and it's just a little bit different type of scan that tries to you know sneak its way around and find open ports. Uh, this time I'm going to do a capital O which tells it tell me what version operating system is the computer I'm scanning running. Now here we go it says too many fingerprints to match given OS details, so it can't really tell us right now a good guess. But you see we have the same ports that are listed as open. So that's how that works as far as the scan goes. Now like I said, there's a multitude of different options you can use here for nmap. I mean, it is way beyond the scope of the video to go through all of them, but you can do a little experimentation on your own there. Now this program is a map. Where did it open up? Okay, right here. All right, now I'm going to get to my desktop. A map. Okay, so change directory into the A map. That's where I extracted it. Now I've got the executable here. This is a banner grabbing application. This application, you point it to a open port on a host, and it's going to ping and probe. Not ping. It's going to probe that port on the given host. And it's going to try and do version detection and grab banners. If you were doing a Microsoft uh, Windows server, like 2000, uh, on port 25, it would grab the SMTP mail banner. It can grab banners from any service, open port. See right here, I just told it to scan the default gateway on port 80. And it tells us that it matches HTTP, matches HTTP Apache 2. Uh, and it just tries to do version detection, you know, and figure out, hey, what's going on here? 
and what is making this service run what's the version behind it and everything else and the, the goal of all this that I've done in this video is to detect open ports and to figure out what services are running on those ports once you do that and figure out hey the server is running an IIS 5.0 with this given service you can go to any uh, vulnerability database okay and you can scan I mean not scan you can you know search for the given vulnerability bug track on security focus is a well-known one you can go down here to the vendor okay pick out the vendor select the version number and search and it'll list if there's any vulnerabilities you can click and read about them then once you figure out the vulnerability you can you know either use their proof of concept code or you can come up with your own exploit and try and do an enumeration and a penetration test on each one of those ports based on the information that you've gathered so this is a starting point for any analysis auditing and assessment of security I hope you've enjoyed this video